Hey, welcome back. Today is February 13th, Saturday, and on this post, I'll be telling you about the overall crypto markets very quickly, which includes Bitcoin dominance and Bitcoin price action, and see how they could potentially affect the overall altcoin markets in the short term future before diving into Dent, Dent USD, and see what exactly is going on in this market. I'll be telling you about the bullish and bearish case scenarios for today, as well as the short term price prediction on this market, according to what I'm seeing on the charts. Before I begin today, if you guys are watching me on YouTube, do subscribe. If you guys are watching me on TradingView, do follow me as I'll be keeping you updated on the latest crypto setups on my watch list, regardless if it's a good day or a bad day. If you guys want to support me and don't already have a Weibo brokerage account, you guys can use my referral link down below. They're still giving away two free stocks as of today upon a successful sign up and a qualifying deposit of 100 US dollars. And I will also receive a referral bonus if you guys sign up under me. Please also read my full disclaimer below. I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. I'm purely sharing my own speculations opinions on this market. I cannot tell you the future, and you should always do your own due diligence before trading or investing in this market as it's extremely risky and volatile. If you've got any questions or comments, please do only leave them in the comment section below, but I'll try my best to get to as many of them as possible. Now see what exactly is going on in this market first. Most importantly, I do take a look at Bitcoin dominance. It tells me what the money could be trending into, would be Bitcoin, altcoins, or neither. So currently, we do have Bitcoin dominance down about 0.5%. This breaks down to Bitcoin price action down about 0.7%. However, total altcoin market cap up slightly about 0.5.6%. So this is still the upside of Bitcoin dominance trending downwards. Is when Bitcoin price action is trailing that of total altcoin market cap even though we have very uh, mild changes today. Okay, this is why I always emphasize Bitcoin dominance trending downwards is more ideal for the altcoin price action on both the upside and downside. Today, we're seeing Bitcoin dominance trending down, and this is the upside of Bitcoin dominance trending down. On the daily time frame, it's still my focus here, because as of yesterday, I did mention that there was a possible double bottom pattern here, However, it seems like the price action is continues, uh, continuing to make lower lows, but I'm focusing on the RSI here as well because it looks like there's possible bearish, uh, bullish, bullish divergence for Bitcoin dominance. If this bullish divergence actually plays out, Bitcoin dominance can actually get a bounce and change course to go back up. Not as ideal for the altcoin price action. Let's take a look at Bitcoin market real quick still running within these two of uh, um these two trend lines i had initially estimated has not broken above this top trend line nor has it pulled back to the bottom trend line so still very interested in seeing what the bitcoin price action could be doing here because if bitcoin price action actually pulls back this could still affect the altcoin markets the the magnitude of that effect would depend on how far up or down bitcoin Dominance is trending. Let's take a look into Dent USD and see what exactly has gone on in this market. On Dent USD, let's check for any overbought RSI readings or possible bearish divergence scenarios on the higher time frames from the daily time frame up to the monthly. Okay. On the monthly here, we do have an RSI reading of about 79. Okay. Uh, pretty overbought, so something I'll be, uh, I would not lose track of, okay? No possible bearish divergence scenario here, indicating to me that the bulls are losing momentum. So that is still a good signal for the bulls. No possible bearish divergence scenario here yet. However, pretty overbought territory, as I said. The weekly time frame, we do have RSI at about 93, slightly under. No possible bearish divergence scenario that I see. So in terms of divergence, it's still a good signal. However, still in pretty overbought territory. Three-day time frame, we pull back from an RSI reading of about 92. And now we are currently at about 77. So some type of possible bearish divergence here on the three-day time frame. If the price action makes a higher high, I'll be looking for a higher high as well on the RSI to actually negate bearish divergence on the three-day time frame. The daily time frame here, we are at about 
75 RSI reading right here. So if price action was to make a higher high on the daily time frame on the price action chart, the RSI reading to beat was about 91 to negate bearish divergence. So let's do a recap real quick. On the monthly down to the daily time frame, there has been overbought RSI readings. So I would not lose track of that because that could still signal a pullback. Possible bearish divergence scenarios on the three day and the daily time frame. Let me check the weekly one more time. Yes, that is correct. Possible bearish divergence scenarios as well on the three day and daily time frame. Let's take a look into the smaller time frames here. Let's go to the six hour time frame. Actually, six hour time frame is right. So I actually see more of a symmetrical triangle pattern here. Symmetrical triangle patterns are continuation patterns, and in this case, would be bullish. According to Thomas Bukowski and his website, the pattern site, it's a 60% chance of it breaking upwards. You guys can verify that's that on your own or with your own sources. Now, if it actually does break upwards, the price, the measure target here, if it breaks out by the apex, which is estimated to be about, to be about February, to, uh, actually tomorrow, 12 o'clock UTC, that's the absolute apex of this symmetrical triangle pattern, the measure target would be about, as far as I can read it here, it's about 0 0.2, 0 0.22 cents. I think that's about, um, as far as I can read it there, approximately 0 0.22 cents. That's yeah, that seems correct. 0 0.22 cents would be the measure target if it breaks out by the absolute apex of this symmetrical triangle pattern. Now, measure targets are approximate theoretical targets only may actually be different in real life price action, more or less. Let's take a look into the bullish and bearish case scenarios here. Bullish case scenario, price action breaks above this top trend line and go towards its measure targets. Very simple. Bearish case scenario here is more interesting. Price action breaks its bottom trend line, okay? Which I would be, it's still reasonable because I do see bearish divergence on the six hour time frame, okay? Comparing this high, this higher high with this past high. However, with equal highs on the RSI, that is still classic bearish divergence. Whenever I see bearish divergence on a specific time frame, a conservative estimate is that it's gonna come down to the next closest moving average. In this case, will be the 21 MA on the six hour time frame. Let's see if we actually do have bearish divergence on the 12 hour time frame as well. Yes, we do. So on the six hour and 12 hour time frames, uh, there is already, there was already bearish divergence, okay? Could be developing on the daily and three day, okay? So on the six hour and 12 hour, there was already bearish divergence. So that is something uh, I would not ignore because of my conservative estimate whenever I do see bearish divergence on a specific time frame. Now, would the price action actually come all the way down to meet the next closest moving average on these time frames where they have bearish divergence? It depends on how strong the bulls are, okay? If the bulls are actually strong enough in this market, price action could take off without it, or if the bulls are somewhat strong enough, it could hold up the price action, consolidate, within a more stable level and wait for the next closest moving average to come up to meet the price action. Or if the bulls actually just flop, then the price action could come significantly down and drop significantly down to the next closest moving average. Okay, so let's see which of these three scenarios would it be. So going back to my bearish case scenario, if price action breaks its bottom trend line, the next level of support I'll be looking at Will be first be the four hour twenty one, but for the sake of my bearish case scenario for the bearish divergence here, it could possibly look like this. Okay, so if the four hour twenty one does not hold, the next level of key support I'll be looking at would be the 0.11 cents level or area, which is also the next fib level. 
and of course the 6 hour 21 is fast approaching there, okay? If the bottom trend line is broken, then I could possibly be looking at a falling wedge pattern instead, which is more dangerous because both the top and bottom trend line is going against the price action. Now these are my bullish and bear, uh, bearish case scenarios for today. Let me know if you found it helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Let me know agreements, disagreements, feedback. I'd love to hear them. Hope you manage your risk carefully. And if you'd like to see any more of my most recently uploaded videos on YouTube, you guys can check out my links up here on YouTube. See you next time.